Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with another After Effects tutorial for you to get your teeth into. Now, uh, even with the recent increase from 10 minutes to 15 minutes, I'm not going to be able to fit all of this into a single tutorial, so this is going to be the first of a multi-part series, which I'm calling, surprise, surprise, The Order. It has several components in it that I'm going to cover. The first is this nice parchment-style background. That's the easy bit. Then I'll show you how to create this uh, rather swanky wax seal effect. And when I've done those, I'll show you how I did the animation for the text. It's a very popular technique these days. And when we're done, you should look something like this. Now, as always, this uses no plugins at all, including the uh, little dust particles you see. Generally speaking, I lean towards trap code form for doing dust particles. But uh, these are achieved with only the uh, standard tool set that's available in CS3, CS4, or CS5. So that's what we're aiming for. Let's get cracking. Okay, so the first component is a really, really simple one. I'm going to create a new composition. We'll call it Parchment Background. As usual, I'm using the 720p PAL preset, which is 1280 by 720 at 25 frames per second. And in this case, we set a duration of 10 seconds long. Just hit OK. Right-click in the project panel to create a new solid. Pick yourself a nice parchmenty, light, sandy color. And we'll call this parchment color. And just hit OK. Then go to your effects and presets panel and find the fractal noise effect. Drag that onto your parchment color. And in the effect controls, go to noise type and select spline. And that gives us this effect, which is pretty much what we're after. We just need to make a couple of tweaks. Um, firstly, with contrast, take that down to 50%. Then go to the blending mode and select screen. And that'll just mix the, uh, the two components together to give us this nice parchment style effect. Okay, so that's step one out of the way. Next step is to create our wax seal. So uh, create another new composition and we'll call this wax border. Grab your ellipse tool. Make sure it's set to no fill. And stroke is on. And increase the stroke to something pretty significant like 100 pixels. Holding down shift to make sure it's circular. We're just going to drag and create a nice fat circle. And line it up roughly in the middle of our composition. Now you go to your effects and presets panel and find the roughen edges effect. Drag that onto your new shape and then go to your effect controls panel. Increase the border to about 50. Increase the scale until it looks how you want it to be. We're looking for a nice kind of rough edge, like the uh, external edge of a wax stamp. So in this case, about 450, and leave the rest as is. Now the reason we're creating a wax border component all on its own is because we want the uh, center part of this to be smooth, and the roughened edges effect affects all edges. So uh, next thing to do, create another new composition and we'll call this wax seal drag the wax border into it and now we can add the remaining components first thing to do with the wax border selected grab your ellipse tool hold down shift and create a new mask that is just slightly smaller than the uh, the outside edge swap it from add to subtract and with the mask selected, just use the cursor keys to nudge it into a roughly central position. Now I might just shrink that down a little bit. And reposition it. Okay, so now that's got a, a nice cutout through the middle. Again, back to the ellipse tool switch the fill back on 
make sure you've got the same color selected for the fill as you selected for the stroke of the previous object. Turn stroke off and we'll create a new shape layer which is just big enough to cover the hole in the middle. And we'll drag and drop that to the bottom of the pile. Okay, next step, right click on the wax border component, go to layer styles and bevel and emboss. Now this is where the fun starts. Twill down the bevel and emboss settings. Increase the size significantly, probably to about 30, depending on the size of your wax um, outline. And already you can see it's starting to look just like a waxwork seal. Now you can play around a little bit with the uh, altitude of the reflection, but I find the defaults are just fine. Okay, so there's two more components I'd like to add before we carry on. The first is another simple ellipse. Turn the fill off. And the stroke back on. Turn the stroke width back down to about 10 pixels. Hold down shift and create a nice simple circle. Line that up in the middle. Might just increase the size a touch. Right click, go to layer styles and bevel in the boss. Let's line it up a little bit better. Now you can leave it like that or you can set the emboss settings to uh, down instead of up, depending on your personal preference. I think down looks better in this case, so I'm going to leave it at that. And the final step is to create something to go in the middle of the wax seal. Now I'm going to use text, but anything with an alpha channel value can be used here. So select your text tool and drop your text. I'm going to use the letter F. I'll just solo that so you can see what I've chosen. I'm using the parchment typeface, which is this wonderfully ornate medieval looking typeface, perfect for a, a kind of wax seal effect. And just like all the other components, you use the same color as you have done for the rest of the wax. So I'm just going to solo that and the wax border, just so I can see what I'm doing and line that up in the middle. And before we go any further, one of the things I've found is when you use the bevel and emboss settings on this, you tend to lose some of the fine detail in the scroll work. So uh, what you can do is actually create a small stroke around the outside, maybe about the uh, four pixel value, just to thicken it up a bit before you add the bevel and emboss. So if I unshy them, right click on the text, go to layer styles and select bevel and emboss, you can see we've got a much much clearer image. And again I prefer this particular part to be beveled downwards rather than upwards because it just looks more indented that way. I'm going to increase the size just a little bit, take it from 5 to uh, 7. And I'm also going to increase the highlight opacity and the shadow opacity up to the full whack of 100, just to make it look really, really obvious. So if we go back to our parchment background, we can now bring in the wax seal and drop it on top. Now it's a little bit on the large side, which isn't necessarily a problem. Just tap S to bring up the scale properties. Shrink it to the size you want, about 50% in this case. Maybe hit R, rotate it a touch, and hold down Shift and use the cursor keys just to move it off to the right hand side. Final thing to do, just to make sure it looks as though it belongs on the parchment underneath, right click on the wax seal, go to layer styles, and we'll just add a simple drop shadow. 
Okay, so there you have it. That's the first two elements of our um, order tutorial. So you've got your parchment background and your realistic looking wax seal. Um, in the next tutorial, I'll be covering the animated text and uh, maybe a couple of other things if I can squeeze it into the uh, 15 minute mark. So keep your eye open for the next tutorial. The uh, project file for this will be up on my site at shortformvideo.com once I've finished the entire tutorial series. So uh, keep your eye open for that as well. As always, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.